catapult was a formidable weapon and set rocks and missiles high into the sky over the enemy's defences, destroying the inside of the encampment and anybody that happened to be in the way. This manoeuvre was well practised and used when attacking the Brigantes while storming the defences. It was known as the Testudo. Testudo literally translates to the tortoise shell formation for obvious reasons. It deflected all the objects that rained down onto the Roman army below whilst attacking the main gates. Warburton was now a military stronghold in the area and an important link in the military control of the region. Not only did the Roman military now occupy the village, but also a strong Roman settlement started to grow around the outside of the fort. Once the military campaign had moved on northwards, Warburton was left to its own devices and quickly became self-sufficient as a thriving Romano-British settlement. The Romano-British citizens would carry out their lives much as they had done before the Roman invasion had taken place, only now they had adopted and embraced many of the Roman ways of life. Of course, Roman soldiers would still have been a frequent sight around the village and the surrounding area, and scenes such as this one of the soldiers cleaning their equipment would have been a familiar sight at the time. But no doubt, the Celtic influence of the area would still have been in the mind of many of the ancestors who lived at the settlement, and it was not unknown for some of the Romans to embrace the Celtic traditions themselves. As the combines churn across the landscape today, just inches below, still lies much evidence of these ancient people. It is quite possible that even today there may be people living in or close to the village who may be descended from the Roman people who once lived at the ancient settlement. But there is no doubt that Roman Warburton would have been a spectacular place to live with the Roman soldiers patrolling the area during the 1st and 2nd centuries and the rapidly developing domestic settlement that eventually replaced the fortlet as a strong Roman community with plenty of character. The Roman legionary soldier dedicated to the army for 25 years of his life after which time he could retire and could, if he wished, remain in Britain. His shield was made of plywood and was designed to provide excellent protection its shape was curved and not flat, and this gave it the added advantage of deflecting sword blows or spears that was aimed at the legionary soldier. He also carried a short sword that was withdrawn from under the right arm and used in a stabbing motion in close combat with deadly effect. The body armour was extremely effective in protecting the upper part of the body whilst allowing the freedom of movement. He was fully prepared to defend himself and others in the name of Rome and to further the advance of the conquest of Britain. The shield was painted in the colours of the legion and incorporated a steel boss in the centre to add further protection to the soldier. Once the army had decided to leave Warburton, they moved north, dismantling the fortlet before leaving and burning what remained of it to the ground. Game was hunted on a daily basis by the men of the village providing much needed protein in the diet of these ancient people. Roman food was of the highest quality and preparation was an essential part of the daily routine for the people of the settlement.
cauldrons for cooking would have been a common sight around the settlement, as would tents made of leather. These would provide shelter, but soon timber structures would have been constructed, providing a more substantial and permanent living area. Goods were produced here supplying the surrounding area with pottery, brooches, jewellery, even food and also the possibility that coinage was made here by the moneyer himself.